Hey, welcome back to the shop. Um, I mean my car, sort of. Hey, we're on our way to uh, a little place 45 minutes to the east of us, and we are going to pick ourselves up a uh, Steiner uh, Ford 20 with a 20 horsepower Onan knockoff. And uh, currently the owner says he bought it at auction, uh, and it does. It only works in reverse. It doesn't go forward. Um, 1200 bucks. If I come get it right now, literally, I realized I was buying this like 10 minutes ago, and it's 7.30 at night, and it gets dark in 45 minutes. So we're going to load this thing up in the dark, probably. Interesting things coming along in life. And uh, this, this hopefully this tractor will help uh, realize some, dr some, uh, some dreams and, and aid in uh, my, uh, my midlife crisis. <laughs> At any rate, uh, thanks for tuning in, and let's get on with it. No, you're not driving it off. I was, we got it back safely last night, and now we got to tilt it off. Wow. Right, here we go. I'm going to try to use my weight. <laughs> All right, so I might have gotten a little ahead of myself, and I didn't record uh, taking this apart, uh, but essentially this Sunderland 15 hydraulic motor uh, is held together by these four screws, and that's pretty much it. This, this, by the way, is a bearing. Um, I pull. Uh, this was pressed on the shaft, and this was pressed into the housing. Specifically, this housing. So that was pressed in here. The shaft was inside of there, and that was pressed onto that shaft. And then this pinion was just kind of sitting on there. Now. This pinion has seen better days. Um, this is part, mostly the reason why the back end was locked up. This is your Sunderstrand 15 with this assembly inside of here. Um, this bearing number 14 was com all the ball bearings were out of it completely. Uh, there was no snap ring uh, on the front to hold in the pinion, which I'm thinking there's gotta be. It's gotta be, right? How could there not be? Yeah, it doesn't specify, does it? Well, shoot. Screw it. So anyway, I thought it'd be fun to quick go through and see what each one of these pieces is uh, on the actual thing. So number five is this shaft here. Now, I didn't get a new shaft. This was the shaft was like a 300 Ooh, 330, $330 part, and you can see that right here there's some, some chipped teeth. Um, well, I don't know if teeth is right, but splines. Um, there's a groove right here that I believe takes a, uh, a external snap ring, and that retains uh, the bevel gear. Um, but other than that, the rest of it looked fine. So for $330, bucks, i am going to go ahead and reuse this. Um, because I'm cheap. Alright, moving back. Uh, so item 5, this is item 14, the new bearing. But as part of item 3, that plate. Which is this one right here. And this pretty much holds and keeps together all of the pistons. So we'll go ahead and pull out each of these pistons. So the reason I got a new one of these is, and I don't know if you can see it from there, but if you look right here, that is a little bit boogered, like something got in here and bent it. Um, there were also little shavings of metal, and that's got like kind of a sharp edge. This is reasonably hard, as uh, you would think it would be. There is a slight burr right there. I might try to knock that off. Uh, so I have a new one of those. I don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera the difference, uh, but this is nice and smooth. And this one is all chewed up. This essentially presses up against this plate 
and then this plate it goes up against the back part of this housing right there and that that plate is at an angle and that's what causes it to rotate alright so then you have this assembly with various ports on the bottom and that just slides in there like a so um, you want to keep everything clean as much as possible so I've, I've tried to keep most of the dust and grime and dirt off and I have purchased many many to shop towels for that reason so we'll be, uh, we'll be burning through these I imagine pretty quick alright so this piece here is uh, this housing right here uh, we got a new gasket we still have the locator pin here which is item 9 um, and then item 1 is this kind of like brass impregnated metal piece um, and it has a groove in it that locates on this locator pin and then the needle bearing uh, item 11 uh, protrudes up and just in case anybody is wondering how far so this needle bearings top is proud of this surface by about 84 thou uh, I don't think it's it's pretty much there just to register the center of this and then this pin registers this correct me if I'm wrong but I could have swore that AVE removed a blind bearing by, if I remember right, it was just pounding um, rags? Although it was on a much larger scale, but I'm game. See if it works. I think he pounded rags into the center and eventually. Dude, it is like peeing on silk sheets. One more, one more try at this and we should be good to go. Now, hopefully there was uh, nothing in the bottom of this hole, um, like a port or something uh, that we just plugged up and can never get clean. <laughs> it totally worked. I can't believe that worked. Perfect. So you can see here that if I push on this shaft, if I push on the top of the shaft, uh, pretend there the pinion's on here. Better yet, we'll just put it on. So the pinion's on here, right? And this is engaging with the flywheel. So as we bolt it up, this gets uh, the, there's a wheel, or a, sorry, a gear tooth uh, that gets pushed into here. So this is allowed to push down and flex slightly. And that puts pressure against this, these two mating surfaces and allows for these teeth to hopefully maintain contact uh, with, that, with that other gear, the, the spur gear. God, I don't know my gears. It's okay. We're going to be all right. So we have the question of this bearing and how do we press it on and when do we press it on because this presses into the outer housing and presses into this bearing. Let's do bearing shaft. I really hope I got this in the right order. Oh, I really, really hope I got this in the right order. One more. There we go. All right. Phew. Oh, that was close. Oh, that was close. All right, so we beat on her until she was good and set in there. 
and now we need to get this snap ring in here. Well, after much cursing, it's almost in here. It's not quite where it needs to be, though. You have this spot here, and you have that spot there, or it's shiny, and then you have like a, a rough circle here. So I'm fairly certain this end goes on this side. The gasketing. Let it commence. Well, here's mud in your eye. So line up that shaft. Okay. We'll spin it just a little bit. There we go. And now we're compressing. All right. Put these bolts back in. Really surprised. I'm not sure if I have to grease this, but given that this has direct access to the transaxle, and the transaxle is full of hydraulic fluid, my assumption is is that this is greased by the hydraulic fluid, and I don't have to put actual grease in. Um, I could be completely off on that too. So, you know, grain of salt and all that. I don't have a torque spec on these, so snug, fairly snug, pretty snug. Fairly tight, go around a couple times, go, go crazy, crazy with the cheese whiz. That's my torque spec. And uh, if you know what you're doing with these, unlike me, uh, to help out those who may be watching this in the future, please comment below. Um, if I feel like you're credentialed more than me in what you're saying, I will certainly pin you to the top so that others can benefit uh, from the hive mind wisdom as I uh, I couldn't really find too much about these things on the internet other than one or two guys on wheel horse forums So it's been about a month since the last scene uh, where I was putting this back in and the gasket tore. Uh, reason being is it took a month to get the new gasket in. Hopefully this is the right part. Uh, I'm just going to remove one, two, three, and four of these bolts for the 9 16 And we're going to pull this free, wipe it down, put in the new gasket, put it back on, tighten everything up, uh, probably get down in there, wipe it up a bit, and then we're going to move it to a new location, uh, let it run for a little bit, and make sure that the drip that we're getting from down here goes away.
So we went ahead and put a slip scoop bucket on it. Check. Yep. And I can even ride it. That's right. Nice comfy chair. That's floating eventually. <laughs> it's true. It's a floating it is, chair. It is kind of like a floating chair, isn't it? It's a floating chair. It's okay. Floating chair. <laughs> so what have we done to it since we it's first bought really it? Great Jeez. <laughs> so we went ahead and put a, I welded in a, um, what is this, uh, two and a half inch, no, two and seven eighths, sorry, two and seven eighths, so that'd be, what, two and a half inch pipe, so there's a two and a half inch schedule 40 pipe. Uh, that I welded in here because uh, I'm going to put a grappling bucket on here at some point uh, and that'll all get mounted to this. Uh, I also put in a receiving hitch because uh, I'm lazy and I don't like lifting trailers so now I can just get underneath the ball, lift it up and take her away. Uh, not that that's what this is intended to do but I also want to put like a little boom uh, jib coming off of here so that way I can uh, so it'll come up, extend this way and then you'll be able to like uh, pick up things uh, with a rope on the end of it. Uh, also, the ability to put like some kind of like tiller or tine uh, off of this, so it'll come out, go down, and and tear into the ground a little bit. I think would be useful. So it's mostly just an accessory uh, attachment point. So we also went ahead and replaced the lights because they weren't working. Uh, the the shattered glass I think gives it character, so we're gonna keep that. Um, we went ahead and put mirrors for backing up and then we polished up this plexiglass so it looks a little better. We also have lights uh, for when we're backing up. We've got the weight bar on the back. Uh, we got two brand new Carlisle's ag tires on the back because uh, I intend to use this on a hill side uh, quite a bit to try to improve a right of way uh, that I got up to a piece of property we bought. And of course, he's just getting his exercise in until he misses it and tears up his shin on that blade. But I suppose he'll learn at that point to be more careful. <laughs> Stink. <laughs> Give you the thumbs up. So, this is the right of way to the property. It consists. Uh, this was made back in the 60s by the original owner of the property and it consists of about a 20 to 30 degree slope. Um, there's a fair bit of uh, water uh, runoff and damage. Uh, you can kind of see it. the whole thing tilts this way as well. Most of the water drains down this way uh, but as you get up there it, the water path goes from being on this side to in the center. Uh, but it's about a 200 foot uh, walk and elevate, I should say there's a 200 foot change in elevation over this walk. And this is what the tractor has to go up. So the goal is to take uh, oh probably 500 or so pounds of cinder blocks up to the property uh, along with uh, a whole bunch of these decorative uh, paper stones uh, for maybe the bottom of a shower or just uh, an area that we don't want mud to be in dirt, you know, like maybe before the tents. Uh, it'd be nice to have that kind of an area up there. Um, got some other miscellaneous stuff back there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see if the Steiner's up to the task. Uh, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight cinder blocks. So uh, that's probably like 320 pounds or so. So we'll see if this will take it up that hill.
I'll tell you what, this Steiner is going to be put through its paces here. We're talking road building, flattening, grading, um, got a winch for the front so things are going to get pulled up into trees I think for tree forts. Um, been waiting a long time to get the property like this. It's got some real nice white oaks, um, some bur oaks, maples, uh, some other things. I have no, I'm not a tree expert, I don't know. If you know what these things are, you tell me. If you're like me and you enjoy this sort of thing, feel free to uh, subscribe and uh, I'll be supplying more of this as the days go by, as we move on to a different stage of life. Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you later.